Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Itzdairit and you're welcome to this episode of Truth for Truths. Today we're going to be doing something very, very different. I have here with me someone very special. She's going to be explaining to us how is it like living with especially a special ability. Without further ado guys, let's jump right into it. So Ma, I'd like to meet you. My name is Soluku Nelayo Ido. Okay. I'm a native of Mekke, a physical challenge person. I'm living with you and I also use the um, courses okay. as a, to move around. Okay, that's yeah. good. Okay, so Ma, I'm going to be asking you some questions. Question, my first question is, how was it like? Um, can you share me some of your early childhood memories of your experiences growing up? How was it like growing up with a disability? Growing up with a disability is quite a challenge. Mm -hmm. I've been challenged. I've been experienced this like from two years old. Wow. And you know, with the challenge, going to school, primary school, secondary school, it has been a challenge. At a point in my primary school level, um I was rejected in school. Wow. But later on, with the help of some people, I was able to resume back. back to school. But it's what it, a challenge. But with God and the foundation, I'm able to move on. Okay. My next question, before I even go to the next question, was this how you were born or just something happened? Well, I wasn't born this way. Okay. I was like two years old or two years plus when it, it happened. I was just, let me just say it's polio. Okay. Polio. Okay. Would you give anything that I think I we I face that I know that most of us, most people like me, do face is in areas of mobility. Okay. There are times when you want to go out with wheelchair, you right. stand for hours on the road. If you are not mobile, you wow. stand like hours on the road before you could get a car to take you. You know, people just look at you as this one is i i don't think i can wait Great. i don't okay. think i can share my extra time to help for us this uh, to help you know that's one of the challenge oh is there anything you feel like people can do to help when you're in that situation for people in that situation well i just think how people can help I, I, will, I will advise people not to just look down on horse people. like that. The little help that you can you can render, render yeah. to people like us, just do, do it. it. Like those people, the cab men, men. Uh, you can just spend a little time to wait for us just, to move in and like that. So I think that's one of the ways. Okay, did you participate in any extracurricular activities? Yes, I'm a, I'm a sports lady. Wow, how are you able to combine that? Uh, yes, and I do represent the state. Uh, are you I'm serious? A, yeah. <laughs> so uh, what sports do you play? Well, I'm a parlitas. Uh, okay. I was once a parlitas. Okay. I did parlitas for several years. But right now, I'm into uh, wish year badminton. Oh, okay. Which, oh, so there's something I called wish year badminton. Yes. Wow. I'm just getting to know. So that, that's good. So that's one of the ways to express yes. your own self yes. in sports. That and I'm mean, also a civil servant. Oh, yeah, yeah. civil servant. Yeah. So, okay. I work so, in the Ministry of Women Affairs. Wow, that, that, that's good, that's good. Did you think there's um, education played any role in your life? Did you think there's an important for people that are, there, that are specially able to have? Do you think education will play a better role in their life? It really did. Education yeah. played a vital role. Vital, you know, people like us, people thought, most especially parents, they thought when you are in this condition, then you cannot become Something somebody in life. life. They denied you of education, they thought, okay, you cannot be there, you cannot be coming, even like that. So, education is part, is, it really plays a, a, a vital role. You know, when you are educated with this condition, people, uh, people see people you, respect they respect you, you, they address you well. Yeah. Yeah. So, it plays a vital role. So how did you develop your sense of independence and self-reliance? Like how did you build that independence? What were the things that you did? You know, well, right from the day that I realized that I'm in this condition, that I get to know that, okay, this is who I am. I'm 
determined within me that I'm going to make it. No matter what, I'm going to pursue my goal. You know, so I'm like that. I was able to to be independent. I don't depend on people. I believe I don't believe there is something I cannot do. I believe with time I will do it. If you can spend five hours to do your things, I may spend seven or eight hours. But I know I will surely get there and I will do it. Oh, that, that, that's a that's a good one. Did you have? But I'm inspired myself. Did you have any special role model that you looked up to? Maybe someone that had a disability like you or someone that always encouraged you while you were growing up. Was there any role model, or any figure, any role figure that you really admired? And that was one, you said, okay, because of this person, I have to be somebody in life. Was just your own sheer I don't, determination. I, don't have, I just determined within me. Oh, wow. I know you've spoken about discrimination, injustice, but was there anyone particular? Did you encounter any instances? I'm sure there were instances of discrimination due to your physical ability while you were growing up. You spoke about your inability to be mobile like when you call especially if you are not mobile people don't want to wait but aside mobility was there any form of discrimination also well personally i would say the discrimination that i think i faced was when i wanted to have been admitted into primary school education okay. when the head of the school said they cannot admit me and that and apart from that, there was um, really no. I, yes, but I, I know there are a lot of people like me that face a lot of discrimination like that. Okay. So, how did your experience growing up with a physical ability? How did it shape your life and made you who you are today? Um, did you think that okay, if you were not um, with any special ability, would you still be the same person that you are today? Hmm. Oh, I never for once think like that because okay. I believe. If I can be in this condition and I was and I'm still able to achieve what I achieved today, then I don't think if I'm not a challenge, it can affect. Yes. Uh, so, thank you very much for greeting us and see your presence. What advice would you give people out there that are disabled and they are feeling like they cannot become anything and they are not able to because of their disability? They feel like they are nobody. So, what advice would you give them? Well, my own advice to them, firstly, I will tell them to be determined within them that you can still do it, you can make it. And at the same time, I want them to, to, um, have, a, to have a sense of self-worth mm. that, okay, you can achieve this, you can do this. You know, it is the way that you present yourself, that is the way people will, will accept you. Let people know that you can do it. And if you have the opportunity to go to school, um, Please. do it. So you, and education it, is very, very important. important. And if you don't have the opportunity to learn something, to learn just learn it well. Be independent. Don't rely totally on people. Though we cannot do it of ourselves because of our condition, but don't let it be hundred percent. Be be independent. Learn to do some things by yourself. Shape your reshape yourself. Train yourself. I will become what you thank you very much. My was an amazing session with you. Thank you so much. Welcome. Thank you. My name is Adela Okay. I'm a civil servant. I'm working in Lanto, the Sacred Heart Hospital and Okay. As a medical laboratory technician. As a medical what? Laboratory technician. Okay, laboratory technician. Wow, that, that, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. So, um, can you share some of your childhood memories and experience growing up with a physical disability? How was it like growing up with a disability? You know, it's very, very difficult for me. But, but through the help of my parents, mm. my mother stood by me. Oh. Okay. She stood by me. She's not a husband to be. And my, and my, my daddy too. Anywhere I'm going, she's there for me. Oh. She's with me. If I remember some time ago, when I want to go and do jam, mm. okay. my mother is the one that... She follow me. Okay. I am to you. Go and collect my number. Wow. People are busy now. We know you. You are you 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 are you are working with the um, local government. You are looking for promotion. She didn't answer, and I was okay. somewhere sitting down. Okay. For my mom, she was there for me. Wow. Okay. So that's very good. So you would say that your parents were really good bedrock yes, for you. Yes. Wow.
family. Okay. My next question is, how did your family and friends, how did they support you? You just said your mom. Was it just your mom? How about all of your family members, maybe your siblings, your dad? Were they also Mom. supportive? I'm, I have to be the first one of, this, of my mom. Okay. I have six brothers, okay. six sisters, but they, they are nowhere okay. to be found. But my, my younger, my siblings, okay. from my mom, they are there for me anytime I call them. They are there for me. They really supported me. Anything I want to do, they supported me. So, um, was this how you were giving birth to or no. something? I'm no, sure. no, no, no. Okay. My disability is as a result of poliomyelitis. Wow. And that was, was at what age? Two or three. Wow. I don't know, but my mom said, narrate the story Sorry. for me. Okay, so it was at age two. Oh, yes. So you've been dealing with this since age two. Wow. Uh, was there any, I'm sure there will be a lot of um, challenges you experienced. I want you to mention at least one or two special challenges you faced growing up. Due to your physical disability, oh. the only challenges I'm facing is that then, when I was in another institution, when I was in another institution, but thank God I met people that assist me. Okay. But transportation challenges there from Houston mm. to the street was premises. Difficult moving mm. Yes, yes, no, no, no. Uh, you know, uh, this time around, you see Marua, tricycle, bike, yeah. but then... There you know, was nothing like that. Yes, there was nothing, yes. Yourself. I have to trek from Ose to the school premises, okay. and which is very, very difficult for me then. Yeah. That's the only thing I'm facing that, that time. So with the help of people that were available, yes, you were able to... So if yes. you are going to suggest a solution, you said that there should be people there's people should be ready to help you. Yes, yes. Us. Okay, yes, yes. with one disability yeah, or the other. other. Yes. Hmm. People, some of them, some of them will say, it's because of your of your condition. That's why I say, as, as I now tell them that if not because of my condition, it's always to sell this thing for me two naira. Yes. You sell it for me ten naira. I be having uh, ten naira. Mm -hmm. eh? That become a quarrel between me and them. Okay. So, that's why when I go to market, I have a customer. Okay, I yes, I just go to here and buy something from there. And when my, my, my sister moves down to Africa, okay. she go and buy everything for me. Okay, I don't need to go to market again. again. Mm -hmm. That must have been very painful when people just see you and they automatically believe that you're a beggar. You're a beggar, yes. And if I want to enter a tag, you call the tag now. Where they collect 10 naira from people, they will say because of your condition, they want to collect 15 naira from you. That, that, that's actually very bad. They should collect lesser. No, they will say because of your condition. Because uh, of which condition? That must have been. My really, disability really, really is a disease. Yes. And some people, if you sit down beside them like this, even in the Church of God, hmm. in the Church of God, they stay away from me. Stay away from me. Yes. They stay away from me. Just look at them. You are not my God. Yeah. Life continues. And the other thing is, what do you to say? And so, see, see, so see, more to come up. Yeah. That's what they do. I mean, like. So, um, you, okay, I, I, this question, you already answered me when I said, was this how you were giving me? You said, was as a result of polio. polio yeah. What role did, what role do you think education play in your life? What were the rules? Do you think education is important? Education is very, very important for, for people with disability. Mm. Because if I'm not educated, I become a beggar on the streets. Mm. Because there's nobody to support me in my family except my mom mm. and my sibling. But if I'm not educated, I don't, I don't think I will get to where I am today. If I'm not educated, I will not be here with you today. So it's okay to say that education is an age. Yes. Oh, it was education. Did your experiences growing up with a physical disability? How did it shape your outlook? How did it shape your outlook in life? How did it contribute to the person you are today? Ah, I thank God. God has helped me in all the areas of my life. I'm able to cope. So you just said, okay, God 
and share at work has been helping you grow. All right. So if there's one advice you would give to people that are disabled and they've lost um, their sense of self worth, what's the advice you give them? Because you you've grown to a particular stage now and you understand how things. Are done. So what's the one advice you give? The only advice I give to them is that they should not look down on themselves. They should, be, they should not look down on themselves and they should believe that they can do all things so, by who strengthen them. Mm -hmm. They should try if they are not educated, if they want to learn trade or trade skill or, or skill, is putting their best, best so and that effort they best in, in that field. Mm -hmm. So if other person are giving it like five percent, they should give it hundred percent because exactly. they have yes, yes. Wow. yes. That's good. Thank you very much. It was an amazing time with you. Thank you for your time and thank you for sharing your story. Okay, we hope you. to God see bless. you next time. Thank no you. Problem. Thank you. Okay, and were there any um, adaptation or accommodation that were made to facilitate your education experience? Because I don't think they have because you've mentioned that you had to be the one to track down. Yes. So there was not like uh, any special treatment made for people. With yes. That mm -hmm. must have been very, very tough for you. Uh, so how was reading like? You able to, you want to read? And because unlike other persons, is easy to just wake up. Because you have to now trek. It might be tiring for you. How were you able to juggle all of that together? Ah, you know something about me is that if I come back from okay. Okay. school, okay. if I come back from school, I'll be inside the hostel. I'll okay. not go out again. I'll relax. In the meantime, I take my book and reach. Okay. What school did you attend? Ogun State College of Health Technology. Okay, Ogun State College of Health Technology. Mm -hmm. How about cooking? I cook by myself. Okay, oh, that, that, that's, that's great. You know, I was trained to do everything Take by myself. Yourself. Because my mom would say, it's great that I was training you, that you have to do it with your leg, not your hand. Okay. You just have to use hand to do something. Mm -hmm. I, I will do everything by mm -hmm. myself. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Okay, good afternoon, Ma. Good afternoon. It's nice having you here. So, we'd like to meet you. What's your name and what do you do? My name is Adeku Lelua Kemisola. Adeku Lelua Kemisola. So, what do you do, Ma? I'm into bag making. Yeah, into bag making. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, can you share me some of your early childhood memories and experience growing up with your disability? How was it like for you? Mm. I finished, I went to school properly. Okay. I stopped at SS3. Okay. From there, I went to study nurse. Nothing. Okay. But my disability was not born. You are not born. I'm not it. born with it. Okay. But after my SS3. Okay, it was in SS3. Yes. Yeah, after wow. I finished my work and I start learning nursing. I mean, I don't go to school of nursing, but okay. I learn. Learning. Okay. I learn. After then. I, but a day, the incident just occurred a day. Let me say a day. It was just something that just occurred out of nowhere. Yes. It was not like polio or anything. Yes, let me say polio. Okay. But why did you have to wait till SS3? Some people were, I know, two years old, three years old. Ah, I don't know. Wow. I don't have an idea. That must have been very painful in SS3. Yes, so I finished so you, you just started yeah. adjusting to the new life ah, in SS3. Yes, yes. I cannot even imagine the pain. Ah, it's not easy. But um, did you think education play any major role for you well, while being with a physical disability? Do you think it is best to be educated as a physically physical disabled person? Yes, it's good and it's best because as for this uh, this program I'm into. I really enjoy myself in it and I learn a lot because if I'm not educated, I won't be part of this. So education was one of the priorities yes. for them teaching yes. you to be part of the yes. participant yes. of this program. Yes. So what advice would you give people out there that have disability? What is the one advice you give them? My advice is that they should not look down on themselves and their self, that they should move on. They should move on. They should move on and do what they have to do. With God, everything is possible. That in hard uh, working, maybe they have 
mm-hmm. uh, hard work in uh, I mean, in your work, hard work yes. in the admin. They have a skill, skill that they are doing. Yes, thank okay. you. They have a skill, or they are in school. Mm-hmm. They should not look back. They should continue. Yes, Everything yes. will come up safely one day. Thank you very much. It was a nice time with yes. you. Thank, thank you, you for gracing us with your presence. Thank you, ma'am. Okay, we've had a, we've had different stories from people with disabilities, especially able ones. And you see that we all have a role to play in helping them. Whenever you see them on the road, on the streets, don't ignore them. Try as much as possible. Whatever it is you can do, if you can assist, if you can help them get on a bike, if you just anything to just make it easier. It's not easy being a disabled person or being someone with a special disability. Just try and help them don't make it feel like a disease that if you come close to them you might catch it no just show them that people good people are still existing so with that we've come to the end of today's episode of through to truths okay don't forget to like this video share and comment please share the video comment subscribe more importantly please subscribe to this channel thank you and god bless you